All right, thanks for the amazing welcome. Uh, welcome back to Carilion Court and Castle Coliseum. Many memorable moments have occurred in this building over the past 60 years, and we're looking forward to many more in the years to come, and today is the start of that next chapter. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> On behalf of Dr. Tim Sands and Dr. Laura Sands, our Board of Visitors and our University, I would like to formally welcome and introduce Coach Megan Duffy, who's here, here along with her husband, Kevin, and her sister, Lori, and nephew, Davey. So welcome to the fam. We're honored to have you with us today, and we are very proud to have you, Megan, serving as our next head coach. We believe in you and thank you for your faith in us as well. You will find Virginia Tech, Blacksburg, and all of the New River Valley a very welcoming community. It is uniquely special to all of us, this strong sense of place that we have here that defines us, that the Hokie Stone symbolizes, and this is home. All of Hokie Nation is ready to welcome you your family and your staff with open arms. This is an outstanding example. You guys are the best, and I'm gonna uh, get back to some kind words on y'all in a second. You've really made, really made a difference. Um, before we look with anticipation and excitement towards the future of Hokies women's basketball, I certainly wanna pause and thank our, our student athletes and our, our, our players. What they've been through the past week and a half and how they've handled it, so many voices coming at them, perhaps the anxiety over the unknown and future. Um, they know from tight ball games and tough times that there is something meaningful to getting through adversity with perseverance. They handled it like champions, and I am proud of you all. We all are. You know, thank you for that, but equally so, thank you to our entire team uh, for the wonderful ride you took us on this season. ACC regular champions, you set the bar high and expectations high, and that is a good thing. You've, get, yeah. You've given Virginia Tech such wonderful national vis visibility, and this team has elevated us from a challenger to a champion brand. All of our student athletes, but in particular our women's basketball student athletes focusing today, obviously, are great representatives of Virginia Tech. You guys are easy to root for. Um, you elevated not only Virginia Tech basketball, but it coincided with the elevation and the booming popularity of women's basketball. You guys did that. And quite frankly, uh, this team, you elevated our candidate pool per, for this position, and we're really grateful to you all. I'd also like to thank and, and recognize the folks at Marquette, in particular the athletic director, Bill Scholl, and the, the university and their team there. Um, as I mentioned to our players, um, Marquette was going through what they went through a week ago, and we certainly have empathy and respect for that. Everyone at Marquette was classy and professional to work with, and I want to thank them for all that, them, all that Marquette did for Megan and her development and growth as a head coach. I'd also like to give a quick thank you to Bridget Bruger McSorley, who was with me uh, the entire way and involved in the search process. She spent endless hours on research and leading the transition team and more. I also want to thank John Belen, Carter Brown, and Brian Cox for their behind the scenes work, along with many others in our department and across campus during this process. And to our athletics communications team, the strategic communications group, and content, just wow. What y'all put together in a short period of time and what came out yesterday, you guys are amazing. And then our operations team for the setup and more today um, at Prozum at its best, thank you. Um, the traits that we were looking for in our next head coach are aspects that, we, that appealed to us about Coach Duffy and we certainly feel that she brings to the table. She's a proven winner. She's a sitting head coach that, built, that has built two programs and, led a, a, and now ready to lead ours. We were looking for someone with ACC or some relatable roots, 
in our search. Certainly Notre Dame, when she played in this very building, was the Big East, but she's long been connected to the Irish um, and, and Coach McGraw, and so there is some ACC ties. We were also impressed with her connections in the greater DMV area in Northern Virginia at the time at George Washington, and quite frankly, the connections and recruiting in the Midwest could be a point of differentiation and an advantage for us. We felt Coach had, has the ability to succeed at an elite level of college basketball and looking down at the nation's very best and beating them, and she has done that previously. She's respected in the sport, nationally as a coach, and she was one heck of a player. She has paid her dues. She's had the ability to successfully evaluate talent and recruit and hire great staff. We certainly talked uh, during the process about this new era of roster retention and NIL environment and navigating it together. Her player evaluation skills and developmental skills are A plus. Leadership qualities certainly. Our players um, requested um, in their new coach that they would like the coach to be on the floor to them that still had some games and could coach them out there and had an open door. So we checked those two, two boxes. Um, we found through our background that coach generally cares about her players and the student athlete experience. And she's um, at an age that can still be relatable to players. Great work experience but still in their neighborhood, right? Much closer than mine. And um, she's an elite competitor with a high motor, that fire and energy and passion to succeed. She will help us retool and build our program, keeping and elevating the Hokies on the national stage. Found her to be a great communicator, found her to be authentic and genuine. And she certainly understands the role of head coaches at Virginia Tech that Coach Beamer set the example of. That logo never comes off, and this is a town just like Cheers that everybody knows your name. <laughs> Speaking of names, Coach Duffy's name came up early and often in the search process. We certainly heard of her coaching chops, but also heard that she was selective, very, if there was to be another opportunity, very selective, happy at Marquette, but perhaps for the right fit and opportunity, and we knew of her interest and respect for the ACC as the greatest league in the nation. We went through the, yeah. Yeah, I might keep going. I haven't gotten this much applause in a long time. I, <laughs> just one more page, one more page. All right, uh, so we went through the phone interview phase and, and then in person, and certainly in those settings, you ask the questions of each other I've used the, the analogy of, of speed dating. You're trying to determine working chemistry both ways. Do your values align? And really, what are the points of differentiation for both of us each way? What can she bring that other candidates couldn't? And we're selling what we thought Virginia Tech or what we know Virginia Tech could bring. We believed how influential and impactful her hiring would be, not only for the success of our team, but continued momentum of our, of our entire department. A rising tide raises all boats. She was prepared, she'd done her homework, she was really impressive, smart, passionate, thoughtful. You could tell she's doing what she was called and made to do. Coach, develop young people, compete, be the best you can be. And there was another key component in this, um, this relationship, and it's the rare terms to use um, early in a relationship and especially during a search process. Loyalty and trust. In a, search pro in a search process when you're trying to talk to different people and there may be a gap between when you first meet with somebody and you get there in a competitive market and other jobs, that trust and loyalty that she felt Virginia Tech was the job for her um, really made a huge impact on, on me and us and that loyalty and trust will be returned. That was a, a really big, big part of it. It was awesome and it made a huge difference. All right, finishing up. To our fan base, um, you guys really helped, really helped. Every single candidate that we talked to brought up our fan base, the passion of it, the sellouts. They all knew about it, and of you guys, we know about it. Our competition knows about it. 
The country knows about it. This committed and loyal fan base can make an impact on the outcome of games, and coaches want to go where it's important, and you guys really made an impact, and we're grateful. Coach Duffy knows that athletic success is important to Virginia Tech, as are its values. I am very confident she will reflect those values and demonstrate success holistically. So, when we tip it off this fall under Coach Duffy's leadership, we will have a program that our fans and community will be proud of. Our players will be well-trained, well-prepared, and coached by the best. They will be students at Virginia Tech, and they will be Hokies. Inner Sandman will play, and Hokie Nation will be behind them 100%. I can't wait. Coaches hit the ground running. It's a great start. A plus for the first 48 hours. A plus. <laughs> the new era of Virginia Tech women's basketball starts today. Please join me in officially welcoming the next head coach of the Hokies, Coach Megan Duffy. Wow, Hokie Nation, uh, this is everything I, I dreamed of in the last week and a half, and, and even you know after many, many years being a college coach, to have this opportunity uh, to sit in front of an incredible fan base, an incredible community, uh, with a vision that we're going to just keep going. I just want to express my gratitude for this opportunity and the excitement that's ahead for Hokie women's basketball. This incredible institution, the fans, the alumni base, the supporters, is really unlike anything I've ever seen. Um, there's been times in my past that I dreamed about coming to a university that loved women's basketball like you do. And I, I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be your leader for women's basketball. <clears throat> I would just like to take this opportunity to express my thanks and gratitude towards Marquette University and Marquette Athletics, uh, to Dr. Lovell, our president, uh, Bill Scholl, Sarah Bobert. They've been tremendous over the past five years. We've done things um, with that program that also nobody think, uh, thought could be done. Um, to our team and, and to our staff, it's a, it's a really difficult uh, moment a couple of days ago to have to say goodbye, uh, but I leave Marquette with just tremendous memories. Uh, the growth over five years for that program was, was incredible. There were a whole lot of wins uh, and tournament moments that I'll forever remember and then obviously take into this situation here. Uh, but I will miss you all dearly and thank you so much for allowing me to, be the op uh, to have the opportunity to coach at a great place. You know, as, as Whit mentioned, coaching changes are extremely difficult for, for so many people, for, for this community, for the student athletes. There's just, you know, a week and a half or 10 days can sometimes feel like years. And so I feel for all of you in this time of just a little bit of unrest and unknown, um, just for hanging in there. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Coach Brooks um, and his staff and support staff for for what they did to put Virginia Tech women's basketball back on the map. Um, it's been incredible to watch from afar, and, and it's something that when this job opened up, I was really motivated to say, hey, let's keep this going. So congratulations to them and the student athletes who helped make um, all the memories, wins, uh, championships possible. Being a coach's spouse is not easy as well, and I have one of the best, uh, I think, in the world, and my husband, Kevin. He's a former college football coach, so he gets this world, he gets the grind, he gets the pressures that, that come along with this, um, this gig. And Kevin, I love you so much, and thank you for even giving me a little encouragement to follow my dream here to Virginia Tech.
I just want to say thank you for my sister Lori and my nephew Davey for being here. He's waving to everybody. Um, you'll see him in the, in the hokey uh, gear all season long. They live over in Charlotte, so that'll be nice to have some family close as well. And to my mom and my dad who are, are watching back in Dayton, Ohio, just appreciate uh, their love and support and encouragement through, through my coaching career. Uh, I'd also just like to quickly thank my agent, Brian. Witt and Brian had to have a lot of conversations over the last, you know, 48 hours, and it's just awesome to have um, two people going at it that are extremely passionate and genuine about what they do, and, and first and foremost, look out for the best of their people. So thank you, Brian, for your, for your help. Uh, you know, this, this process... Um, interesting enough was pretty seamless. Uh, as much as it feels like it moves slow, it was actually uh, fast. There was a lot of similar values and alignment um, for what I was looking for and then what Virginia Tech uh, needed to hold uh, in this next process. I'd like to thank uh, President Sands and Dr. Sands for welcoming me into this community. I know this is just the beginning and I can't wait to help you um, continue to bring great excitement and energy to campus. Um, I can't wait to work alongside you helping with our student body um, and keeping this, this institution in an incredible place. To Whit Babcock and his entire team and wife, I'm so excited to come be alongside you in this journey. Um, it was really cool just to spend, like he said, speed dating moments together. But I think we're in a profession where you have to read people, you have to get to know somebody fast, and I couldn't be more thankful for the opportunity to be your head coach here and looking forward to continuing to have great success. So I flew in yesterday and there have been a whole book of people I've met already. So I'm not gonna uh, bore you with me trying to remember everybody's names right now. Um, but to Br uh, Bridget and Brad specifically and, and their, their crew and external internal relations, it's been amazing, the first class effort. Um, you know, there's this slogan here that this is home and I, I can't tell you how great I feel about that, that it's coming to reality. And this does feel like home already. And I just appreciate the work um, and welcoming that you've given to me, uh, my family, and just helping me learn the lay of the land so far. You know, yesterday when I flew in, there's a lot of different things you have to do from media, meet people, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, the greatest moment yesterday for me was meeting our current team. and. And not that coaches don't appreciate and love all of this, like I mentioned, but there's just something when, you know, and I felt it at Marquette and many places I've been, when you have that special group of people. And ladies, I know this has been challenging and emotional and a lot of feelings that I'm not sure we all even knew what they were. But yesterday was, was pretty powerful for me to have a chance to want to introduce myself, um, hopefully bring some stability for the future, um, but just to get to know you guys a little bit. And you, you are the ones that, that do this, the work, the intensity, the commitment, the, sacri the sacrifice. Um, and it was just such a pleasure to hear your stories initially. I'm so confident with the base of what we have here. Success is coming and hopefully very fast. So I appreciate you being phenomenal young women. Uh, relationships have always been important to me with our, our, our teams, and I look forward to making sure that that's something at the forefront of what we do before any X's and O's, um, winning or losing, that we build those relationships. What I found with this current team is they have a drive and a passion, and they have a belief like I do in sustain what we're doing. It's gonna take a whole heck of a lot of work, which we know there's still a lot of pieces to fill in, but I just appreciate your commitment to excellence and building over these last few years. I see some of our current team from this year as well. <laughs> so
Some had to go to class, so we can't be mad at them. I've, I've learned in this process, too, how much you guys are little rock stars around here. <laughs> And it's, it's pretty incredible. I've been into some amazing institutions and seen fan bases, but so far, this is, this is unreal. So, Kayla and Liz, thanks for being here. I appreciate you. I hope you'll forever feel that you are a part of this family as, as I take kickover. So, congratulations on your careers and your success. People make this. I can't wait to bring future Hokies in here in a few weeks, in a few months. For future players and our current team listening and watching, you're going to have a head coach that will give every ounce of energy to this program, to these relationships in the quest of winning championships. You're going to have high energy and an incredible work ethic from me. One of the things I learned as a player at Notre Dame was just how much you have to sacrifice to be great. And now, many years later, you realize how every second of it is worth it. I promise that I'm gonna mentor and teach to the best of my ability. We're gonna have a whole lot of fun along the way. Um, I've already learned that walking out of that tunnel is pretty fun as well. But one of the things I've always just prided myself on outside of just being a great coach and mentor, is, is making sure you, have, you guys have a great experience off the court as well, and developing future leaders, young women, who can go out and make a huge impact in this community, community and beyond. I look forward to, to helping you develop and being in a support system on and off the court as we win a whole lot of games along the way. I'm really looking forward to building this program. Uh, just to kind of clue you in on a couple things that's always been important to me with the foundations of my programs are an incredible toughness about our teams. You know, we celebrate things on both sides of the ball, whether that's a charge, a loose ball, um, an assist on the offensive end. I love that we've played up tempo here. We can shoot the three. And as we develop our roster here in the next few weeks and months, um, I think you'll see some similarities um, to why things were successful here and obviously some unique and uh, um, interesting tweaks and changes to bring more versatility to our team as well. One of the things I think with my uh, programs and teams have um, really shined over the course on the national scene is just our versatility being difficult to guard. Um, and one of the things I've always been proud of and I'm so looking forward to you know, rolling up my sleeves and getting to work with our, with our women is just having a relentless growth about ourselves. Where we will be in our first workouts here coming up will not, where, will not be where we are by the time we get to ACC play. Um, so seeing them incrementally grow and develop um, on and off the court is something I'm really looking forward to. Uh, like I mentioned, um, I've been a winner. I don't know anything else. Um, and while we have some, some pieces to figure out and some stability still to put in place, um, I never say we're rebuilding. We're building the next great championship team. <laughs> Lastly, to Hokie Nation, I, I told you you're a huge reason of why I'm here. This is home. I can't tell you how thrilled I am to get to know more of you, whether that's at the grocery store or in the Coliseum here. Um, but I can't wait to continue to build this tradition. You truly are the best fans in the country. As Witt did his research, I did a little bit of mine, and you can't believe the reputation you all have. Mostly good, all right, mostly good but just your passion to um, give us that sixth, sixth player out there is, is incredible. And to our student body, I think as you're watching women's basketball across the country and on the national scene, there are certain places where it is growing, it is building, you feel like you're a part of this team, and I don't think there's any greater place than, than Hokie Nation for that. 
So I'm gonna hold you to it that you're gonna continue to show up and be there for our women. Um, and I look forward to building this with you. Thank you again for giving me this opportunity. It's with my deepest gratitude you know, to be your head coach. I can't, get to wait, uh, can't wait to get to work uh, and looking forward to, to getting to know more of you. Thank you. All right, we have time to uh, accept a few questions for both Witt and Coach Duffy. Uh, for you media members, please raise your hand. We do have wireless microphones that will be making their way around. We'll start in the left with Mark. Please state your name and affiliation so Coach can get to know you. Mark uh, Berman of the Roanoke Times. Uh, welcome to uh, Blacksburg. Um, Megan, uh, uh, how do you approach the challenge of uh, keeping Virginia Tech a uh, successful program, especially at a time when you'll have to replace a few uh, All-Americans. Absolutely. I think the greatest thing is we've done it here. And I think the stability of knowing there's been teams who have gone through here to win championships uh, and to do it at a high level in the national scene, going to a Final Four a couple years ago, um, there's tradition here. And that, that means a lot. As we move forward, you're right, this is a little bit of a volatile time. There's a lot of uneasiness with rosters changing, the transfer portal, NIL coming into play more than it ever has been, even over the last you know, couple of years where it was coming to fruition. And I think the thing that I'm excited about is I think we can have um, all the perks and the glitz and the glamour and still stay true to who we are in Hokie Nation, the culture, you know, the, the women we're proud of. Um, and if we can get the right people again, to fill out an incredible roster. I think the sky's the limit. Um, right now, it's a lot of managing, getting to know our current team. Um, you know, as much as I get done with this, it's gonna be again on the phones, you know, ready to, to find the pieces that will also add to our current team. So it's gonna be a lot of work. I think we have a good start in the last, you know, 24 to 48 hours. And I look forward to the challenge. Um, it's, it's going to be an incredible journey with it and something that I'm very hopeful that we will, we will have a great team by the time it's all said and done. Let's go on the right to David, please. Uh, David Cunningham, Tech Sideline. Hi, Coach. Welcome to Blacksburg. Uh, I'm curious. You mentioned your style of play. You played for a Hall of Famer. You've worked for some great coaches. Where does that style come from, and, and how did you kind of get, get to – this and the up-tempo and, and the gritty diving on the floor for loose balls type of mentality? Yeah, I think I've always taken, you know, different things from different people I've worked uh, for and with, and I had the luxury of playing for a Hall of Fame coach in Muffet McGraw, and she's still somebody that's so instrumental in my life um, as I'm in the coaching ranks now. Um, you know, as a, as a professional in the WNBA and when I played overseas, I got to play kind of strangely for nine different head coaches. So even in my formative years, learning the game and, and growing, um, I just saw a lot of different styles, whether that's European basketball, whether that's how the WNBA has developed, um, you know, whether that's more up-tempo, whether it's positionless basketball, um, whether it's how you uh, teach the game and how you connect to your players. So I've really taken just, you know, a lot from different people. Um, even every position I've had as a head coach, you have to evolve and change to your players. So it's not a situation that I believe we have to do it this way or this is the only way to win. You got to put those pieces and that connected group together and, and pick the best offense you can pick. And, you know, um, my teams have always been great on the defensive end. They've been tough on the boards. And so as you develop your current team, some of those staples that I mentioned will have to be the core of what we do. Um, and then you continue to evolve, whether that's developing your young players, bringing in, you know, new players that, you know, maybe haven't played for me. Um, you kind of have that patience and that, that mix um, to do both. Let's go in the back of the room to Brooke, please. Hi, Megan. Welcome to Virginia Tech. Oh, did Thank I you. Your mark? Sorry. <laughs> um, my name is Brooke. I work for Channel 10 in Roanoke. Um, piggybacking kind of off of what David said, you've played for a lot of great coaches. 
Is there a message that a coach has given you or a piece of advice that's really resonated with you that you find yourself passing on to players that you have now? It's a great question. You know, for me, I've always been somebody that wants to be the hardest worker in the country, um, whether that's in the gym, watching film, on the phone with players, or just sitting in the office, um, you know, getting to know my current team now. So I've always taken great pride with that. The other thing is just the power of preparation. Um, I had the opportunity in the Big East to, to go against Gino Ariema three times a year. Um, you know, with hope that we would finally beat them, and we did, which was awesome. But just going against some tremendous coaches, too, how prepared you have to be, how you have to make adjustments. Um, I really love that part about the game. And then the other thing I have learned from, from people I've worked with is that you got to be yourself. You know, I'm, you know, I'm a high-energy person. I love what I do. Um, I was telling the girls yesterday, don't be – you know, worried if you hit a th three in the corner and I'm giving you a high five running down the sideline. Like, I want to celebrate those positive moments because behind closed doors, we're going to be working and grinding. And I get to see the vulnerable, um, you know, moments that happen for a student athlete. There's, there's no getting away from that. So I really love that piece of just being myself and being genuine in what I do. Um, I really feel that this is a vocation and a calling for me. You know, some former players, they might get into coaching just because I don't know what else to do or, you know, or come back to basketball. And I've been preparing for this moment for my whole life in a lot of ways, coming from a family of education. And um, just I had tremendous coaches around me, too. So, for example, I don't think I'm in this situation if I don't get to play for, for Muffet McGraw the way she taught and motivated and inspired me. So I'm very grateful for my path. And um, for me, coming into a new community, I'm just going to be myself. What you see is what you get. Um, and work really, really hard for all of you to put a good, good product on the court. Back on the left side is Zachary. Hi, Coach. Nice to meet you. I'm Zachary Osmond, Sons of Saturday. Uh, recently in the game of base or basketball, you've been a player, an associate head coach, an assistant, and then as of recently a head coach. Um, how have all those roles and at so many different schools helped you um, win in the sport? <laughs> well, I tell you, the way that the game and, you know, college athletics is changing, you know, seven years as a head coach, it probably feels like 20 now, and what and I were kind of talking about that, just all the the different things that have happened and from, from COVID now moving into, you know, just a new wave of college athletics. So um, I've taken just great experience from everywhere I've been. You know, after I was done playing professionally, I got quickly into the coaching ranks and I, I learned how to recruit up and down the East Coast when I started my career. I went out to the West Coast. I mean, just learning how to you know, build relationships in different ways. And really at the core of this, what, that's what it comes down to. So all the things I learned early on as an assistant, um, there's some great similarities to what I'm doing now. The people, the relationships you build, the work ethic. Um, you just get a little more experience along the way. Um, I've also been put in a lot of leadership positions, you know, from being a point guard um, to being an associate head coach, but just even with my community of being on campuses and, you know, interacting with the student body and different groups and organizations. So all of those things I've been exposed to has prepared me for this moment um, to be on the national stage and the national scene and with one of the, the best women's programs in the country. And um, I'm really lo looking forward to taking some of those highs and lows I've been a part of and learning experiences is, and bringing them to, to Blacksburg. In the back of the room, let's go to Ryan, please. Hey, Coach. Welcome to Blacksburg. I'm Ryan Moy, WFXR News out of Roanoke. So welcome. Um, I'm just curious, when you look at the team that you have now, do you kind of see yourself in them? And I guess, what is some of the things that you're looking from what you currently have to kind of raise their play? And also just, what is your coaching philosophy at the same time? Well, with our current team, I think there's a really great foundation. You know, we have, you know, people who are, are still fairly new to the community here, and they've watched a couple All-Americans in front of them. 
um, and have probably taken just a lot of lessons, more than I probably know right now, um, that they're going to be prepared and ready for this next step. The thing I think about with this current team is there's incredible opportunity. Um, all the things that they've been seeing in, in game reps, um, practice reps, being in the environments that they've been in in the ACC um, and the national stage is only going to prepare them for their great opportunity ahead. I'm so looking forward to helping them through that. I think it's one thing to, you know, they're anxious, they're ready, they want to get better, but just guiding them through that um, emotionally, mentally, physically is, is something I'm really looking forward to. Um, I, I just, I was really cool yesterday just talking to them about player development and getting to know their games and just hearing their voices with that. Um, it's not my job to come in and start telling them everything what to do right now. It's I want to help uh, create the best versions of themselves as we start this program um, under my, my leadership. Um, and that's the part I've watched the majority of them in AAU and high school, they don't know that. I didn't want to sound like, you know, it's like you know them more than they know me, right? So just knowing their, their backgrounds. Um, they told me, they're like, Coach, we've grown up a little bit from there. Um, but I'm really looking forward to, to getting my, um, you know, just getting more time with them, my hands on them to, like, just, just help them continue to develop. We've got time for just a few more. We're going to go on the right to Joey and finish with David. Hi, Coach. Welcome to Blacksburg. Uh, Joey with Legacy Maker Sports Network. Um, so this fan base has kind of grown accustomed to, you know, March Madness runs and Final Four, as you've touched on it a little bit. Um, do you try to temper expectations coming into this season, or is your expectation to immediately get back to that, uh, you know, high of a level? I mean, I came here to win championships and be at the top of the ACC. Um, I'll... <laughs> Watching your Final Four run, watching this fan base grow from afar has, has been incredible, and um, I don't think there's any reason to stop. You know what, for me, there, there's going to be some building, obviously with roster management like we mentioned. Um, I'll let you guys set the expectations from the outside. From the inside, we're going to establish our culture. We're going to build relationships. Um, we're going to fill out our roster with, with women who want to do it the right way, want to win, care about each other. And it's a little bit similar to when I took over at Marquette. We only had a small amount on the roster. They were looking for opportunity. You know, people put, picked us, you know, towards the middle or bottom of the league. Um, and in that situation, we just had kind of ignored everybody and got to work and believed in each other and created, you know, an atmosphere that we were going to be proud of. So that's my intention right now as we um, kind of move into these next few weeks to – um, you know, build this, build this the right way, um, making sure our women are, are committed to this university and to our program and not worry so much about the end result right this second. Um, I've been lucky to been to the NCAA tournament, um, beat some really good opponents, so that won't change with me at least, with the fire to do that. Um, so I don't think we have to lower too many expectations. Finish in the middle by the aisle with David. Uh, yeah, Whit, this is for you. You mentioned that Meg, Megan's name came up early and often uh, and, and that she did her homework. What was your first impression, I guess, of Megan? And what impressed you the most about her pedigree and everything she's accomplished? Yeah, what, what, did, what did I notice first? Um, great eye contact. Um, it was nice to meet her husband. It is a package deal and a, a family situation, right? Um, you could just tell she was mature, um, yet with that competitive fire. And coaching is not getting any any easier. But um, I don't know, David. I would say it was a general feeling. Again, you do feel like you can read and understand people. Um, it clicked. Um, I thought she had an executive mindset and uh, had walked in the player's shoes. So. It was, it was impressive overall and a really pleasant visit. And um, again, that trust and loyalty piece in there both ways um, made it even more attractive to hire her. All right, in a few moments, we will have a breakout session here, stage right. But I think, Whit, it's time to present her with a jersey. Yes, I would love that.
Do front and back. All right. Oh, there's no name. Dang. All right. Tight budget. All right. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate your attendance.